rooted in faith, rooted in family, rooted in values, rooted in traditions. Welcome to the Rooted Outdoors podcast. Welcome to the Rooted Outdoors podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Corey Bauman, here with Dave Ashworth. We're coming to you from Pennsylvania together again, right? Yeah, we don't get too many in-person no. podcasts. No, so when we had we had some time tonight. We said we got to do one in person. So here we Special are. Special little treat for you guys this time around. Yeah. And uh, it's been a been a long day. Been here on business, but we are going to dive into. What do we use for filming? We've never really dove into like the specifics of what we use for filming. And now that whitetail season is coming, it's right around the corner. You guys, maybe you got a camera this year. Maybe you've been filming for a while. Um, of course, we're going to talk about what we use. Doesn't necessarily mean that you guys need to use the same stuff we do. It works for us. We're constantly always looking for better ways also to film. And uh, we're going to dive in. So let's do think, it. Man? Yeah, I'm excited. I. I could talk about filming for hours, so we're gonna try to keep this to under thirty minutes and do our best. Yeah. Um, but we have a lot to get, a lot to talk about here, so I say we just dive in. Let's dive in, man. Where do you want to start? I feel like we gotta start with the camera. Okay. The best yeah, place. It's, a, to it's start. a good place. Best place to start. Yeah. So, we shoot uh, all Sony. That's just we started shooting Canon. We we switched to a Sony camcorder, and then since then we've switched to Sony mirrorless cameras and. Um, the low light capability on these cameras is just insane. Yeah, um, it is. I've never seen anything like it. And as a hunter filming outside, you know that first half an hour, that last half an hour, is that's when it goes down so many times. So the ability yeah. to capture that is really important. And uh, Sony is just putting um, so much time and effort into the video, video capabilities of their cameras that yeah. um, switching to Sony was, was a pretty easy decision. I remember us. even like one of our first films when we filmed... Well, I was there actually, you weren't there. I filmed, uh, one of my buddies um, took his son out on a turkey hunt and we filmed it. And at that at that juncture, we were using a camcorder style, camcorder style yeah. camera. And it was a Sony, um, great camera actually. Yeah. And if um, you're thinking about kind of getting into filming, it's a good way to start, is yeah. a camcorder. Easy to use, especially for self-filming, but it didn't have low light capabilities. And we did get the film, but it was really grainy. Of course, yeah. you still have it, but sure. you know, nowadays obviously you're looking to improve everything. So, yeah. um, there's a purpose, I think, for all different styles of cameras, but yeah, we we definitely um, we love the Sony's. We do, we do. So we shoot two different ones. One is the uh, one of their newest, which is the Sony A7 III, uh, which we we felt is a pretty good mix between uh, picture and video. So it does some pretty good picture and does some pretty good video. Uh, a lot of people look at like the Sony A7S II, which is probably a little more geared toward video, or the the Sony A7R III. I actually think they just came out with the R4. They did, yeah. And uh, though that's geared a little bit more toward picture. But the A7 III was at a really good price point, and it kind of does both really well. Um, so that's what we use. So this is the uh, this is the, the body, is the Sony A7 III. We shoot with those. And then um, we have one other camera that we uh, we shoot with as well, which is, which is Yeah, yours. so I actually picked up uh, an A7 III. It's a generation... A7S. A7S. Yes. Sorry, not A7S III. Wish not yet, not yeah, yet but I'll have one soon. Um, but I picked up an A7S um, Generation 1 camera, and it's basically their first mirrorless camera that they made. Um, but still a great camera, 12.2 megapixels, um, you know, shoots in HD. It's a great camera, especially if you're on a budget kind of to pick up your first mirrorless camera. Um, it, um, you know, the, the great thing about these cameras is, you know, I can use that lens on this camera. They're all interchangeable lenses, sure. which I'm sure we're going to get into lenses. Yeah. But just a great camera. It's been awesome. I've had this one uh, for, let's see, eight months now, roughly like that. And um, taking a lot of photos with it. And also, um, this will be the first season I film, self-film with it. Uh, yeah. But uh, I'm excited. It, it, it It's definitely an upgrade to what it we're is. using. Yeah, really good <clears throat> picture. Really good in low light, which is yes. huge. And one of the things that... Is important for us is shooting in a very similar picture profile yeah so we won't get into it too much but we shoot all of our stuff in log which you know has a high dynamic range so we can capture you know all the shadows and the highlights 
And the both of these cameras, any Sony that we shoot in, will shoot in the same picture profile. Yeah. So that if he has footage and I have footage, and we can mesh those together seamlessly because they're in the same color, same picture profile. So that's one yeah. of the things that we really, really like. And being in Texas, of course, I'm you know I'm getting footage of, of stuff that we I might have to send to Dave, and then we create a film through that or whatever. So. It's actually, it's not even an option. We have yeah. to shoot in the same picture yeah. profile, so yeah. um, it does make, and you see too, like, this camera is super lightweight. Yeah, you know? even, even these are small, yeah. lightweight. Real mm -hmm. thin bodies, if you can see how thin it is. It's really, really lightweight, um, but made extremely well. I yeah. mean, that's the one thing I love about the Sony. You know, you see, and not to knock any of the brands, but like some of the other camera bodies are huge, you know, yeah. and they're bulky, especially when you're hunting. It's a, you're carrying a lot of stuff, so yeah. you know it's every nice bit of size counts when you're when you're For taking sure. all your camera gear in. Yep. Um, let's move into the next most important thing. Mm. You know, you can't have a camera without a lens. So yeah. Let's talk about lenses. So what do you what do you run on yours right now? So this is I just have um, a 50 millimeter lens. So this is a prime lens. Uh, it does not it doesn't um, zoom, so it's not a zoom lens. So you would use this type of a lens for interviews. Um, Things you really don't have to zoom in on an animal or zoom in on a person. It is a great, um, we'll get into a little bit of, of aperture and things like that. Um, it, if you've seen uh, photos or a video where, um, you know, I would basically have uh, Dave in focus and everything in the background would be a blur. Um, we call that bokeh. So this creates great bokeh. So it is a really low aperture and creates a great, um, it's just a different look. Yeah. And a lot, of the, a lot of the differences with the different lenses, it creates a different look for you or zooms and Dave will get yeah. in a, a zoom lens. Yeah, and one of the things, <clears throat> one of the best things about the 50 is that's the, the focal length that's closest to the eye. So when, when I'm looking at something, um, this will mirror that uh, as close as you possibly can. Right. So that's one of the reasons that we love a 50 is because it's showing kind of what we're seeing from the human perspective, which is great. Right. Um, so yeah, that's the 50 is, is a, is a go-to lens all the time. Um, so a couple other lenses, this one is the 24 to 105. This is my go-to lens when I'm doing uh, self filming, you know, on the 24 end, I can get pretty wide. Um, but then I can punch into 105, um, and, and get in on animals as they're right. coming in. So this is a great lens, um, for, for self filming. And then it just in general, just, it covers a big range. It's so an all around good lens. It's it kind is. of the lens you have on your camera a, a lot, a of, lot the of the time. Yeah, because, you know, into the next lens, this is a 100 to 400. This is probably, if we're filming each other, we'll be using this as our main lens because, you know, on the long end, 400 millimeter, you can reach out really far. So right. if a deer is way out in a field or your or deer is even close and you want to get really close up shots, that's what this is going to be used for. Um, so this is probably our main lens if we're yeah. filming each other. Um, and then this one would be used for um, cell film. We have another lens that's on here, which is a really wide lens, which is a 16 to 35. We'll use that to film the hunter yes. uh, to get a big wide view, any wide shots, any type of landscape shots, just to kind of show the entire picture. We'll, we'll go to the 16 to 35. Um, and, and that pretty much covers everything that, yeah, that you... we need to cover. Um, there's obviously a ton of lenses out there. Yep. Um, but, but those do the job for us pretty well right now. And you can, um, so these are Sony lenses or they call it, they call it glass, mm -hmm. right? So lenses are glass. So you, you know, you, you don't have to get Sony lenses either. There's other different, different brands out there that you can get that will fit yeah. different styles of camera too. Yep. In fact, you can get adapters and use Canon glass on Sony, on Sony cameras. So, yep. you know, if you're, if you're just getting into the market, you know, you're just getting your first camera, like Tamron makes a couple great good lenses. Great lens, great lens. And, Sigma um, is Sigma, another one. Those are lenses. like third party that, that make really, really good lenses that yeah. are, are a little bit lower in the price point if you're looking for something a little more budget. But and it depends on what you're trying to do too, right? Like if you're you're buying this to enjoy it and to you know film some hunts and things like that, yeah. you know, we obviously just recently started a production company. So, you know, for us, the quality of everything has to be the top notch because it has sure. to it has to look good because people are obviously paying for yep. you know things that we're doing so yep well, let's keep moving with yeah, um, with cameras and so here's a smaller one I know this one kind of looks funny I rigged this up here <laughs> what is that thing yeah I'm gonna tell you so this is just a GoPro so when I'm self filming I'll use this in the tree as my second angle so I'll use the 24 to 105 like I talked about but this will be used as my second angle. Um, 
And man, I'll tell you what, the picture quality on GoPros really these days, is. it's crazy yeah. how good they are. Yeah. Um, they have new technology. This is the Hero 7 Black, I believe. Like steady technology where if you're, a lot of people do it for action sports. Like they're riding a bike, they'll have it on their head. They're bouncing up and down. It yep. is so steady. It's, it's so crazy. steady. And we used, I don't know if we had that one or if it was a different GoPro. I think it was that one. We used, if you guys saw the podcast we did in my truck on the way down to Austin, Texas. Right. We used that. It was in the car while we're driving and it's on the windshield and you can't, you would never you be able tell, to tell no. the truck's moving. I mean, no. you can see it moving and we're driving, but. Sure, sure. Incredible. Yeah. Um, so this is a little trick of mine with this here. So this is just a, a small power bank that I bought off Amazon. It yeah. couldn't have been more than 20 bucks. Um, and I just glued a mount on here so I can take it, I can take it right off of here. Um, and I have two mounts here. And then I have another mount on the bottom. So what I do is I just run a wire into my power bank and then this thing will stay on all day. Yeah. Uh, so that if a deer comes in, I, you know, sometimes I'll use a remote, sometimes I'll just reach up and hit it. Yeah. But I don't have to turn it on. It's gonna stay on all day. I can just hit up, hit record, and then I just let it run and capture it, capture whatever I need it to capture. And that's one of the things about GoPros that maybe aren't the greatest. Um, I don't know if that if they've gotten any better with with that model, but I know the GoPros in general just don't have. They're not known for good battery life. Um, it's a smaller camera, so it's tough yeah. to get yeah. big batteries. So battery packs, power banks, things like that are things you guys want to look into. Yeah. Um, because it's that whole thing when you're out there hunting, you want to be ready to go. Like Dave said, you want to be able to just hit the power, not the power button, you want to hit the on, but the, the record button, not yeah. the power button. Yeah, for so. sure. Um, so this is just a little trick that we use to, to keep, and, and we've had things where we, um, you know, tie a, a power bank onto a tree and then yep. run it to it. But having that extra power for these is huge. And um, and we use these for, for time lapses too. Very yep. easy. A lot of times we'll go out, maybe a turkey hunt on our way hiking out in the dark. We'll set it in a field and we'll capture the sunset after the end of the day, we'll come back and grab it. Now we have a nice time lapse. So yeah, yep. that's something that we that we use these for. Um, should we keep going with some cameras that that fly? Maybe can't go People wrong there. People love drones. Let's talk about the drones. They do. Um, so we use a drone. We use the the Mavic Pro. This is an older version, but um, shoots great. Shoots in 4K. Yep. And, um, you know, I feel like we've been learning how to use it better. Yeah, for sure. Which is huge. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many different ways to use a drone. Like, you know, you obviously you see a lot of drone shots, but the thing that we're, the, the standard drone shot of flyover of, even we've used it a lot at the farm, just the flyover of a property is really cool, but there's so many different ways you can use a drone. So if maybe you have cameras already, maybe you've been filming your hunts to step it up to the next, the next level, definitely drones. And um, you can make a drone do things that like a gimbal would normally right. do where it looks like a gimbal or, sl or it looks like a gimbals, slider or something looks like a slider you can doesn't right. mean you have to fly you know 100 feet in the air to use your drone yeah. um you can do you can use a drone indoors there's different things you can yeah. do with it and um they've come a long way i mean yeah. th the the um the cameras on on them are phenomenal shooting 4k and things like that yeah. um and they take pretty good pictures too yeah like they do photography pretty solid yeah too. Um, and one of the reasons that we like this one, mm -hmm. obviously when it's unfolded, it's a little bit bigger, but it, it has the ability to fold up yeah. and, and get really small. So um, a lot of times we'll just kind of throw it in our bag and maybe we won't use it, but we, we have it there just in case. I mean, you can see how small this is. And they make even smaller ones now. Yeah, they do. Basically fit in your pocket, but it's just this. And this is the remote that kind of unfolds and you run it, you mm -hmm. run the screen with your phone. And um, this is a really neat tool to have. Um, we, we try to overuse it, yeah. um, but now I feel like we've been finding better ways to use it that we can utilize it more and not just shoot yeah. the seam, fly up, fly over something, and bring it back. Um, yeah, you can get really key. creative with, with a drone, too. You can, you can. And they're fun, man. They're fun to fly. They so. are fun to fly. Are we fun definitely fun. just fly it for the heck of it sometimes. We do. We it, do. So. Um, yeah, let, let's keep it moving. What, uh, what do you want to talk about next? Audio? Yeah, let's, let's do audio. audio. So audio... I don't care what you're doing. Um, if you're filming, audio is super important and it can also get super tricky outdoors. Um, obviously you have wind in some cases, you have weather, um, you have, um, you know, if you're in a tree and you're filming, so if we're in the tree filming together, you wanna capture as much of the nat the natural auto audio and a, a lot of obviously the, the nature sounds and things like that. So there's a couple different 
kinds of microphones and we'll keep it pretty basic and just tell you yeah. kind of what we're using and how you might want, want to use it. If, if, you're, if you're just using just maybe a shotgun mic or something like that, yeah. let's go through what we use. Yeah, so the first is a shotgun mm -hmm. mic. So here, why don't you take this and yep. kind of show how it goes on your camera. So this is just a shotgun mic. This is what we'll run most of the time right on top of the camera. Uh, and that's just basically going to give you audio of whatever it's pointing at. So that'll give you really good field audio. If you're in a tree and you're pointing it at somebody, you can get a good interview. Uh, so that's probably our go-to most of the time. Um, and Corey's going to kind of set it up here. Pretty basic. It just hooks into the shoe mount on top, uh, plugs into the side, and then you're ready to rock. So really easy, but gets you really, really strong audio. Um, there's some, yeah, pretty simple. Um, runs on a battery. Some don't. Um, we have a bigger one actually above us that you can't see. This is running above us and pointing at us. So that's a different shotgun mic that we're using. Um, and then the other one that we like to use is, is a wireless microphone. And these are great for on-person audio. Yeah. It's really solid. And um, one thing that we love for these in hunting situations is when, when a deer is coming in or, or there's some action, not only do these pick up what the person's saying, yep. they just pick up the emotion of, of breathing or, or yes. making certain sounds. And man, that just adds so much to a film when you can, when you can capture yeah. those things that, like if, if I was make, making those noises, you probably wouldn't hear them. Right. But this Wouldn't. will pick them up, and that really, really adds a lot. I mean, if you're going to draw your bow, or there's a there's a big buck coming in, your heart starts to beat, and it will pick up all of those things, and yeah. it it's it's a game changer it when is. you go to make a film. It is. Um, this thing I pulled off of the shotgun mic is just a windsock you put on top, because if it's windy, um, you can pick up wind, obviously, yeah. with the audio. The two big differences, just with the different kinds of mics, is this, oops, oops. this mic falls off the camera easy. No, I'm just kidding. It doesn't. <laughs> I just didn't have it on there right. Um, this mic is a directional mic more than anything, so it picks up kind of what's in front of it. Um, it's going to pick up what's in front of the mic itself, not a lot from the outside, so it picks up just different audio. That's more of an, what they call yeah. an orbital mic, where it picks up everything around yeah. the little ball. Um, yeah, so it just so it picks up different yeah. different types of audio. So there's many different kinds of mics there is, out there, there that is. you can use. So. Um, for shotgun mics, we pretty much just run road mics. They're super popular. There's all We run all different models of them. Um, the wireless system I found best, this is the Sony, I believe it's the UWP D11. Um, these, these wireless mics are incredible. Yeah, they're they, great. They're just super high quality. Batteries will last forever. They'll last a full day in the field um, and give you really high quality audio. Um, one other thing, we're actually running this on top of our, our uh, camera that we're filming yep. with now, but it's a splitter. It's the Sony K2M and um, essentially it gives you two ports. So... Uh, if we're filming a hunt for each other, we'll usually run that. So we'll run the wireless mic on the hunter and then also a shotgun mic. So we'll run both. Yep. Um, and that way you kind of capture the best of both worlds, which is yeah, great. Yeah, you can choose which audio you want to use. And then you have two separate tracks that you can use when you edit your your audio. Yep. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a, it's a it's just a bonus. It's Again, it's about capturing everything you possibly can. Yeah. When you're on a hunt, it's, it's just super important. It is. So. Um, one thing to keep in mind that um, when you're out in the field, um, these are just the headphones I use. You can use anything, but you need to monitor your audio. There could be little sounds that you're hearing um, that are running through the mic that you're not hearing. Maybe your levels are off, and the only way to tell is by monitoring it. So yeah. pretty much any time you're recording any audio, you should be monitoring that. So definitely keep your headphones around. Very Make important. sure you have it plugged right into your actual camera itself, um, not into like a splitter or something like that. Right. Uh, just because... You want to get the actual audio that the camera is reading, not necessarily um, yep, exactly. anything else. So. Exactly. Um, how about we switch switch gears a little bit, go to lighting. Um, lighting. Lighting is, lighting is great. Yeah. Um, so right now we have most of our lights around us, so we yep. can't really show them. <laughs> um, but we have a, a key light out in front of us, which is just a big LED panel. Then we have another light over here kind of filling in. And then we actually have a light right up behind us, shooting behind us, which kind of creates distance. So that's just a quick lighting setup, but these are just like LED panels. And um, one thing to keep in mind, you want them to control the temperature. Yep. Um, white balance, won't get into too much detail, but I believe those are called bi-color. But that way you can match the, the white balance in your camera to your um, to your lights. Yeah, if you're, if you're doing an interview, you want to definitely look into lighting. And that's something that we learned over the years in the beginning. We yeah. just didn't really know much about lighting, yeah. but it's huge and there's even ways to light outside even when you have natural light so we'll exactly. learn a lot more about exactly. that um 
And uh, this is a light that I picked up last year. This is an Aperture. I forget the model. It's an ML9 or something. Yeah. Super small, super lightweight. You can stick this thing in your pocket, stick it in your bag. And this is awesome for hunting situations because yeah. you're not going to carry a big LED panel around out in the woods. Um, but this light is very bright. Um, you can control the brightness. You can control the temperature on here. And you can just mount it to your camera. I just did um, some Velcro. Yeah. Put a little thing on my camera and mount it right on. And this gives me a great light source when you're setting up in the morning. Um, maybe if you get in the tree, you want a little light, whatever. Yep. Um, this thing is awesome. Um, and it's it's very cheap. So this is something I would highly recommend. Um, you want to talk about camera? Uh, yeah. How do, we, how do you mount the camera in the tree, right? right. Maybe some of you guys have heard of camera arms already. Yep. Um, that's kind of what we do. So give an example. So there's a bracket. I'm not going to show you all the bracket, yeah. all that stuff. But basically this, there's a bracket that goes around the tree. You guys can see this here, yep. right? You can see that. Um, so the bracket will obviously be on this side on the tree. And then yep. you have your, you have your actual arm. And then you have on the top here, which we didn't talk about is your fluid head. These are really, really important. A good fluid head, it's worth spending a little sure. bit extra cash to get a good fluid head. This is where your camera sits and it's the stability of the camera. It's the fluidness of the camera. So look into getting a camera, a good fluid head. Um, you know, the, the arm is important. I mean, we've it tried is. a couple different arms. We it used is. to use the muddy arms. These are fourth arrow. Yep. Um, I even have a, I even have a Hawk camera arm that I tried last year, which yep which I like in certain instances is a little bit shorter, um, but this gives you the versatility. So the, depending on what your preference is, um, get a good fluid head though. Um, I don't know, remember exactly what, what this one costs. This is a Manfrotto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I don't remember a couple hundred 150, dollars. 150, something yeah, like that. But you definitely want to spend money on a good fluid head because yeah. that'll give you that good smooth movement. You won't have the bounce, won't have any jiggling in there. Um, yeah, really nice. important, especially when you're in a tree. So um, this one would be, this is a fourth arrow also. This is this is their basic camera arm. You probably, um, you know, if you're just looking to get into filming, you're looking for a camera arm. This is a great camera arm. The other one I just showed you is more for a heavier weighted camera. Yeah. That's why we got that one originally. Yeah. Uh, but there's all kinds of different camera arms out there. Just try them out. Um, you know, again, muddy's a, the muddy They're makes great. a great one. They're great. It yeah. depends on really how much gear you want to carry sure, in the woods. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So. Exactly. Um. What else do we got? I mean, here's a couple mounting things. These are for, this is just for my GoPro. So I have one that just screws into the tree. I can bend it around, mount my GoPro here, bend it how I want. Those are great. This one is, we pretty much use this one in a blind. So I clamp it on the side of the blind. I can move this around. So these are mounts for, for my GoPro. So that's another thing to mount. Um, another, we didn't talk about the slider. We'll What's get to that. That's, that's the What's finish. The that's the finish. That's What's your favorite finish. piece. I know. Okay. Um, here's just another small thing that we use. This is just like a Gorilla Pod. I think that's what it's called. Um, it bends around so you can wrap it around things. This is really nice for a cell, like when you're walking in. So I can just hold it out yep. here and point it toward myself. Um, you can set it on the ground. It's really solid. Um, so this is a, a nice thing to have. For sure. Um, what else we got? A couple, couple more small things here and then we'll, we'll get to your slider. Slider. How about that? How about key. that? Um, two things to always keep in your bag. And I know I don't do a good job of this, but... This is just like a blower to blow dust out of your lens and out of your camera. It's a lens cloth to clean it. Clean lens is so key. Yeah. So key. And on the Sony's, I know some of the other cameras have that too. They have an internal cleaner too. So in other words, there's a, uh, a setting where it will actually clean the, um, uh, the sensor, right? So you can take your lens off, you can blow it out, and then you can put it back on and clean the sensor make sure that um, you don't have any dust and stuff in there because a little bit of dust can go a it long can, way it on can. your lens. Yeah, so. in video, you really can't do much about that. No. In pictures, you can, but video, it's, no. you can't really do much. Two final things. One, this is key for video, especially shooting outside. These are ND filters. Uh, so these are, you'll put on the front of the lens. Essentially, it's sunglasses for your lens, so it'll darken your image so that you can keep a consistent shutter speed, uh, which is really important. So... I'm not going to get into too much technical about that, but ND filter is very important. It's essential. I mean, you can't, you cannot, literally can't film can't. outdoors without it. Um, and then this here, I just started carrying last year, but this is, I don't even know what to call this. This is like survival my, pack. My survival, this is my camera say, survival is pack. So I have, um, have like a knife in here with a screwdriver. I have some of these like bands. I have a pair of drone wings in here, uh, some other stuff in here, but, um, 
Uh, usually there's more stuff in here, but this is just something to keep around with little things that uh, you know eventually you're gonna need. Yep. Something's gonna go wrong, you're gonna forget something. So it doesn't hurt to throw this little pack in your bag and when something comes up, you have it. So yep. this is key, put one together for yourself. You will not regret it. For sure. All right, the grand finale. This is your time. Take it away. <laughs> so much drama around the slider. I know, you love the slider. Oh, so this is definitely not essential. It's not. But it's one of it's one of uh, it's one of my favorite pieces. So, um, and we're joking kind of, but at the same time, um, the one of the things I, I will tell you that'll step up your filming is a little bit of, of movement in your filming. Um, whether you're panning, you're moving forward, you're moving backward. What this is is a slider. So basically, the camera goes over top, goes on top of it, um, and then you put your fluid head basically on top of it. And then it slides, right? So if you've ever seen kind of a moving, you know, you can you can angle it and you can go towards a person with the camera on top of it. Um, it creates movement. You can put it on the ground or you can also put it on top of a, a tripod um, and walk around with it. And you can get some really cool stuff with the slider. Yeah. We always joke around because I love using the slider. Yeah. So it's like a yeah. big joke. But yeah. this is a cool little, and they're not expensive. You can get, you know, you can get a slider for a hundred bucks. And it'll add some like different, just some different creativity yeah, to your shots. For but. sure, for sure. Slider, get yourself one. That's it. That's it. Um, but yeah, for the most part, that's. I mean, we have some other things here and there, but for the most part, that's what we use to to do most of our filming. Um, and you just have to find you know what's right for you. And I'm sure we prioritize things that other people don't, Absolutely. and vice versa. Absolutely. But you got to get good at, with what you have, and then you know add as you need. And, yep. Yeah. Reach out to us, ask us questions. For I mean, sure, we love We've this tried stuff. a million, million different things, and obviously we didn't get into editing or any of that stuff, but right. if you have questions about that, maybe we'll do another podcast on editing at some point. For sure. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, ask us questions, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to share more things that we're trying out, and um, yeah. just get out there and try some things. Get yourself a camera. Great. It is it's so a blast. Fun. It is a blast. Yeah. It is a blast. Well, listen, thank you guys for watching, for listening, however you're, however you're consuming this. Uh, we appreciate you. Um, and, yeah, uh, yeah. We'll talk to you guys. Talk to you guys. Follow in the next us on one. YouTube and uh, SoundCloud, iTunes for the podcast, and uh, Facebook and Instagram, of course. So perfect. That's it. That's all, all right. Got. See you guys. See ya. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Colossians two, six and seven.